In this video, we will explore the first law of thermodynamics. First, the properties of an ideal gas will be discussed, including the internal energy of the particles of an ideal gas. Secondly, the first law of thermodynamics will be explained, and the idea of the work done by an ideal gas will be explored. Finally, the thermodynamic processes will be discussed by explaining how they are related to the first law of thermodynamics and shown on a pressure volume graph. Particles of a gas have potential and kinetic energy. The potential energy is due to the intermolecular forces and the kinetic energy because the particles are constantly in motion. The average kinetic energy of the particles is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas. As shown through the formula, kinetic energy is equal to 3 halves times the number of particles times Boltzmann's constant times the temperature in Kelvin. The internal energy, capital U of a gas, is the sum of the particle's potential and kinetic energies. As discussed in a previous video, there are a number of assumptions about ideal gases. The most important assumption is that there are no intermolecular forces for an ideal gas. Therefore, the potential energy is considered to be zero, and the internal energy of an ideal gas consists of only kinetic energy. The internal energy of an ideal gas can then be found through the relationships internal energy is equal to 3 halves times the number of particles times Boltzmann's constant times the temperature, or 3 halves times the number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature. Thermodynamics, in part, relates to using thermal energy and the internal energy of a closed container of an ideal gas to do mechanical work. The first law of thermodynamics describes this relationship, where Q is the thermal energy entering the ideal gas, delta U is the change in internal energy of the ideal gas, and W is the work done by the ideal gas on the surroundings. The first law of thermodynamics is a statement of conservation of energy for a fixed number of moles of an ideal gas. Although work and energy are scalar values, a sign convention is applied depending on the flow of energy into the system. If thermal energy enters a system, Q is set as a positive value. But if thermal energy leaves the system, Q is set as a negative value. The change in internal energy of an ideal gas is directly proportional to its change in temperature. If the internal energy increases, the temperature of the ideal gas will have increased. A decrease in internal energy will result in a decrease in the temperature of the ideal gas. The two previously described formulas can be used to relate the change in internal energy and the temperature of the ideal gas. Work is done by the gas on the surroundings when the volume of the gas increases or decreases. When the volume of the gas increases, positive work is done by the gas on the surroundings. When the volume of a gas decreases, work is done on the gas by the surroundings, and this is considered negative work. The work done on the surroundings can be calculated from a graph of pressure as a function of volume for a closed system of an ideal gas. The work done on the surroundings is the area under the pressure volume graph. There are four important processes in thermodynamics. In each process, one of the properties of the ideal gas is kept constant. These processes will form characteristic lines on the pressure volume graph. In an isochoric process, the volume of the ideal gas is kept constant. According to Gay-Lussac's law, under constant volume, the pressure of an ideal gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. When thermal energy enters the system, the internal energy and the temperature of the gas increases. On the graph of pressure as a function of volume, an isochoric process is a vertical line with an arrow showing the direction of the change of state of the ideal gas. When thermal energy leaves the system, the internal energy and the temperature of the gas will decrease. Because there's no change in volume, no work is done on or by the surroundings in an isochoric process. Note that this can also be seen from the fact that there's no area under the graph. Because work is equal to zero, the equation for the first law of thermodynamics simplifies to show that the thermal energy is equal to the change in internal energy of the process. In an isobaric process, the pressure of the ideal gas is kept constant. 
Charles's law states that under constant pressure, the volume of an ideal gas is directly proportional to its absolute or Kelvin temperature. When thermal energy enters the system, the internal energy and the temperature of the ideal gas will increase. The volume of the ideal gas will increase, and work will be done by the gas on the surroundings. On a pressure volume graph, an isobaric process is a horizontal line. When thermal energy leaves the ideal gas, the internal energy and the temperature will decrease. The volume of the ideal gas will decrease, and because work will be done by the surroundings on the gas, the work will be assigned a negative value. In an isobaric process, none of the terms in the first law of thermodynamics are reduced to zero, but the work done on the surroundings is easily calculated from the area under the graph. Because the area is rectangular in shape, the equation that work equals pressure times the change in volume can be used. Boyle's law states that under constant temperature, the pressure of a fixed mass of an ideal gas is inversely proportional to its volume. When thermal energy enters the ideal gas, the volume expands and work is done by the ideal gas on the surroundings. Because the process is isothermal, the internal energy and the temperature of the ideal gas is constant. On the pressure versus volume graph, an isothermal process results in curved lines known as isotherms. At higher temperatures, these isotherms have smaller curvature and are located above and to the right of cooler isotherms. When thermal energy leaves the ideal gas, the volume decreases and work is done by the surroundings on the ideal gas, so the work term is negative. When considering the first law of thermodynamics for an isothermal process, because there will be no change in internal energy, the thermal energy entering or leaving the system will be equal to the work done. The work done is equal to the area under the pressure volume graph. The final process is an adiabatic process. In an adiabatic process, thermal energy is not allowed to enter or leave the system. The ratio of the pressure times the volume to the temperature remains constant. There is another relationship that applies for an adiabatic process. The pressure times the volume raised to the power of 5 thirds remains constant. In an adiabatic expansion, no thermal energy enters the system. The volume expands doing positive work on the surroundings, and the internal energy and temperature of the ideal gas decreases. On the pressure volume graph, an adiabatic process results in a curved line called an adiabat. Both adiabats and isotherms are curved lines. However, the adiabat is a steeper curve than the isotherm. By showing the isothermal lines on the graph, the adiabatic change in temperature can be demonstrated. The volume of an ideal gas decreases through an adiabatic compression, increasing the internal energy and the temperature. Work is done on the ideal gas by the surroundings, giving the work a negative value. In terms of the first law of thermodynamics, because no thermal energy enters or leaves the system, the work done is equal to the negative of the change in internal energy of the ideal gas. The work done by an adiabatic process can be found through the area under the pressure volume graph. In summary, an ideal gas has no intermolecular forces between the particles, so the potential energy of the particles is negligible, and the internal energy, capital U, of the ideal gas is only the kinetic energy of the particles. The internal energy is equal to 3 halves the number of particles times Boltzmann's constant times the temperature in Kelvin. The internal energy can also be expressed in terms of the number of moles and the gas constant. The first law of thermodynamics states that the thermal energy entering an ideal gas is equal to the sum of the change in internal energy of the ideal gas and the work done by the ideal gas. The thermal energy is set to positive for energy entering the system and negative for energy leaving the system. A positive change in internal energy relates to an increase in temperature, while a negative change in internal energy relates to a decrease in temperature. And positive work occurs when the volume expands and work is done by the gas on the surroundings, while negative work occurs when the volume decreases and work is done by the surroundings on the gas. The work done is the area under the pressure volume graph.
There are four thermodynamic processes. In an isothermal process, the temperature is constant and the pressure is directly proportional to the inverse of the volume. In an isothermal process, the change in internal energy is zero joules and all the thermal energy is used to do work. In an isobaric process, the pressure is constant and the volume and temperature are directly proportional to each other. In an isobaric process, the thermal energy is equal to the sum of the change in internal energy and the work done. In an adiabatic process, thermal energy does not enter or leave the system. The ratio of the pressure times the volume to the temperature is constant. The work done and the internal energy are equal to each other. There is an additional relationship for an adiabatic process in that the pressure times the volume raised to the power of 5 thirds is constant. In an isochoric process, the volume is constant and the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature of the ideal gas. There is no work done by an isochoric process, so the thermal energy is equal to the change in internal energy of the ideal gas. In all cases, the work done by the process can be found through the area under the pressure volume graph. In the case of an isobaric process, because the graph is rectangular, the relationship work is equal to pressure times the change in volume can be used. Thanks for watching.